Jones. Kings. Fire. And blood. Dreams didn't make us kings. Dragons did. Welcome back, everyone. Big surprise. HBO dropped the House of the Dragon teaser trailer, so we'll break it down. There's a whole bunch of Game of Thrones Easter eggs and references to A Song of Ice and Fire, so I'll explain what's going on and who all the characters are and what it is that they're referencing. Of course, I'll be doing episode videos for this just like I did for the main show, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'll just start at the beginning of this and work our way through shot by shot. They focus on a couple core characters that are critical to the Dance of the Dragons, the Targaryen Civil War that serves as sort of the basis for what the story is going to be. You notice that the theme song that they have playing on the trailer has echoes of the original Game of Thrones theme song, but it's a little more subtle. The official theme song for House of the Dragon that will play over the opening title scenes will be a little bit different though. Ramin Javadi is also coming back to do all the music for House of the Dragon. He's the person who did all the music for the original Game of Thrones series. So Game of Thrones probably has some of the best music of any TV show ever. So I'm expecting House of the Dragon to be the exact same. The whole trailer is narrated by Matt Smith's Damon Targaryen talking about fire and blood. That's the motto of House Targaryen. They quoted that all the time on the main show. But Daemon Targaryen is the brother of the current king of Westeros when the series picks up, Viserys Targaryen I. He's the person that Daenerys' brother, Viserys, is named after, because her brother is Viserys II. His brother, the king, is being played by Patty Considine, who some of you probably remember from some other TV shows and movies that he's done, a fairly prominent actor. But the trailer starts with Daemon walking through the halls of Dragonstone. Obviously, it's very darkly lit. Most of these scenes are happening at night. So if you couldn't tell, you couldn't make out the rock face behind him. They're in Dragonstone when a lot of this is happening. This is him on the beach in present day with his now wife walking out to meet him, the older version of Rhaenyra Targaryen, the leader of one of the factions in the Targaryen Civil War, the Dance of the Dragons. This is the younger version of Rhaenyra later in the trailer, heavily featured in the footage too, so it kind of seems like they're either rolling really hard on flashbacks during House of the Dragon, or they'll present the show with two different timelines, like episodes or large sequences during episodes will be set in the past, intercut with scenes set in present day. But then they give you a better idea for when the series actually picks up 200 years before the events in the main show. This also covers the period leading up to the actual Dance of Dragons. Like I said, the actual war only lasted for a couple years, so a lot of the series will be spent in the time leading up to the actual war. Like the full-blown civil war when you see pitched dragon battles in the sky with the two different sides going at each other, that might not happen till the later seasons of the show. This is the giant dragon skull of Balerion the Black Dread, if you couldn't tell. In present day, they showed it underneath the throne room. Like when Cersei is going to look at it with Kyburn to talk about weapons that he has that he's developing to fight against Daenerys' dragons. In the past, though, the big difference is the Targaryens, when they still sat on the Iron Throne, the skulls of their dead dragons, Balerion the Black Dread included, were shown in places of honor, much more prominently around the Red Keep. Because as Matt Smith's Daemon Targaryen narrates in the trailer, the secret to their power, the Targaryens, was their dragons. What happened was, though, is that after Robert's Rebellion, when Robert Baratheon took the Iron Throne, he took all the skulls from their dragons and put them underneath the Red Keep in storage so that he wouldn't have to look at them. Then this is a scene of the current hand of the king when the show picks up. Notice the pin on his chest there. It's Otto Hightower, played by Reese Ifons, who most of you probably know from something else. He's done a billion big movies and TV shows. During this period in history, he's head of House Hightower, and he's the father of the present-day queen, Alicent Hightower. She's the leader of the other faction in the Targaryen Civil War, affectionately referred to as the Greens. The older version of Alicent is being played by Olivia Cook. She actually might be playing the younger and the older versions. It might just wind up being Rhaenyra that has two different actresses playing the two different roles, but she and Rhaenyra are basically the two people fighting for the Iron Throne. Rhaenyra is the oldest living child of King Viserys I, current king, and then eventually once he dies, the big war for succession starts. The whole idea is that before he died, he named his daughter Rhaenyra the heir apparent, but then after he did die, his widow, Queen Alicent, said that her oldest son with King Viserys should be the next king. And you get into this whole conversation about how the line of succession typically jumps over women during this period in history. 
is a very similar situation to what happened with Jon Snow and Daenerys and who had the stronger claim for the Iron Throne. The reason why Jon Snow's claim to the Iron Throne was stronger than Daenerys was because the crown passed from the Mad King to his oldest son, Rhaegar Targaryen, and then to his only son, Jon Snow skipping over Daenerys, who was the Mad King's only living child, by the end of season one of the main show. As I showed earlier, this is King Viserys Targaryen I sitting on the Iron Throne and holding his Valyrian sword, Blackfire. We've been waiting to see a version of Blackfire somewhere in live action for so long, but the cool thing about this period in history is that the sword had not been lost yet, so that's why he's holding it here. Blackfire was the Valyrian sword that famously belonged to Aegon the Conqueror, and what would happen is that each new king after Aegon would be given the blade by the previous Targaryen king as a sign of their right to rule. That is, until the Blackfire Rebellion, which was another Targaryen civil war, there were many of them throughout history, that happened about 60 years after the events of the Dance of the Dragons that they're doing on House of the Dragon. So the Blackfire Valyrian sword was still around for about 60 years after the events of House of the Dragon. Notice the ring he's got on his finger wrapped around the hilt that's got the sigil of House Targaryen on it. That'd be one of the rings that he'd just normally be wearing as the current reigning king. One of my early theories, though, is that he's going to wind up being the new Ned Stark of House of the Dragon, like them killing him off in a huge WTF moment at the end of season one, maybe. Because the whole idea is that the actual Dance of the Dragons conflict doesn't really get going until he dies and the War of Succession starts. This is the younger version of Rhaenyra Targaryen. She was married and had a couple of children with another person from the Valerion household during this period, many years before the actual war started. That's why I say that they might be doing two different timelines. Her first husband was Laenor Valerion, this character here. He was the son of the sea snake, Corlys Valerion, who controlled Driftmark, this island south of Dragonstone here. He was a very powerful person at this point in history. The Valerians are a vassal house of House Targaryen, and many of them also carry Valyrian blood in their veins, just like Targaryens, thus that's why they all have the white hair. What winds up happening though is that he dies when he's younger, so she gets remarried to Daemon Targaryen. That's why you see older Rhaenyra on the beach at Dragonstone with Daemon here after they've been married. This is just the rest of the Valerian household here though. Notice their sigil is the seahorse. Usually sigils on Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon now are the easiest ways to identify people on the show if you're not sure who you're looking at. You notice that they're walking into the throne room at the Red Keep here at King's Landing for a big banquet. The scene kind of mirrors the banquet being held by Ned Stark at Winterfell for Robert Baratheon and the royal family during Game of Thrones episode one on the main show. There'll be a lot of moments on House of the Dragon that they try to mirror from events from Game of Thrones. But this banquet that they're having here in this scene might be to celebrate King Viserys' wedding to Alicent Hightower or to celebrate one of their anniversaries or the birth of one of their children. Not totally sure on the timeline here because it's kind of fuzzy in the background. Then they show you a bunch of footage from one of the tournaments. There were a couple big tournaments during this period in history, so I'm not exactly sure which one this is. The most significant one was sort of the beginning of the feud between Rhaenyra and Alicent, like the actual beginning of the Dance of the Dragons. There was a tournament held in 111 AC to mark the fifth anniversary of Alicent's marriage to King Viserys Targaryen I. Alicent came to the tourney wearing a green gown and Rhaenyra came wearing a black gown. That's why the two different sides in the Targaryen Civil War were called the Blacks and the Greens. The Blacks were everybody who supported Rhaenyra's claim to the Iron Throne because her father the King Viserys had named her his successor and Queen Alicent, leader of the Greens, and everyone who supported her tried to say that her son with Viserys should take the Iron Throne. Also funny coincidence, like we talk about a war of succession with a person named Aegon, like you talk about the conflict between Jon Snow and Daenerys that happened towards the end of the main show. Alicent's older son that she was trying to put on the throne was actually named Aegon. He was Aegon II. As you can tell, because Aegon the Conqueror was such a mythical figure within their family, there were so many different Targaryens all over their family that were named Aegon. It was their most popular name. But the person actually fighting here in the tournament is Daemon Targaryen, Matt Smith's character. You can tell because he's wielding his Valyrian blade, Dark Sister, given to him by his grandfather, King Jaehaerys I, when he was knighted at the age of 16. Dark Sister had previously belonged to Daemon's father, Balon Targaryen, and before him, Aegon's sister wife, Visenya. That's why the blade was given the name Dark Sister, because it was Aegon's Dark Sister wife. You notice that Daemon's armor is very similar to the armor worn by Rhaegar Targaryen during Robert's Rebellion. Even though you never actually see him wearing his armor on the main show, this is what it actually looked like during Robert's Rebellion. 
Then if you couldn't tell who this is, this woman is Myseria. She was one of Daemon Targaryen's lovers. She's from Essos. She later winds up becoming Mistress of Whispers for Princess Rhaenyra after she marries Daemon Targaryen. If you don't remember, that was basically one of Varys' main jobs. He was Master of Whispers for the Mad King, then later for Robert Baratheon, and then briefly for Joffrey when he was king for just a hot second. This is Alicent Hightower again after she's become queen. Notice that she's wearing the green gown, thus the leader of the Greens faction. And real big zoom and enhance, you probably recognize that dagger because that is Arya's Valyrian dagger. Like I said, there'll be lots of connections and Easter eggs for things from the main show, connecting it to the timeline of present day. I've already done many videos about the history of the Cat's Paws dagger and how Littlefinger got his hands on it and how he manipulated events to get it into Joffrey's hands and into the Cat's Paws hands. If it wasn't clear, Joffrey was actually the person who hired the Cat's Paw, not Littlefinger. Behind her, zoom and enhance, you notice this is Graham McTavish. He's playing Sir Harold Westerling on the show. He's the leader of the Kingsguard during this period, like the Barristan Selmy of this era. You also notice that their armor is silver, very different from the armor worn by the Kingsguard to present day. Each time a new king comes to power, they're allowed to alter the Kingsguard armor just a little bit to suit them. But Robert Baratheon, for example, made a huge change because he put the stag of House Baratheon on it, replacing the sigil of House Targaryen. Speaking of sigils, you notice later in this other footage from a joust during probably that same tournament that we saw earlier, you see the flag of House Stark. I don't think that they've confirmed who's playing all the Starks during this era. The leader of House Stark during this period was named Cregan Stark. He was called the Wolf of the North. He had nine children, so I'm sure we'll see most of them on the show at some point. Then probably one of the other biggest changes on the show is they depict their version of the Iron Throne during this era much closer to what the actual Iron Throne looked like in the books, with the melted down swords all over the place all around the throne. This is what it actually looks like in the books, just for comparison, so we're like halfway there. But during this scene here, this final scene of the trailer, this is young Rhaenyra walking in to look at the Iron Throne as Matt Smith's Daemon narrates, dreams didn't make us kings, dragons did. And obviously this scene is meant to mirror the scene of Daenerys' vision of her walking up to the Iron Throne and then later during the Game of Thrones finale before she died, like her trying to fulfill her dream of the Iron Throne. That's why they film young Rhaenyra here, is meant to make her look kind of like Daenerys. You also notice in the background too, around these windows, they don't have the seven pointed star of the faith in them because that wasn't added till later in history. There'll be a lot of other really minor differences in the set decoration, but the major buildings were all there. Like this is still the Red Keep. They still have all the major locations in King's Landing, in Dragonstone, all over the different great houses of Westeros. So what'll happen is, is they'll release more footage before the end of the year, some more teasers. Of course, I'll do videos for those when they drop. If you have any big requests or big questions about the show, just leave them in the comments below. We'll probably get episodes around April or May next year. There'll be 10 episodes in season one. So it'll be a lot more like the scheduling of the early seasons of the original show. Speaking of Game of Thrones, there's a big Game of Thrones reunion happening in the Marvel Eternals movie. I just did a big trailer video for that with Jon Snow and Rob Stark, Kit Harington and Richard Madden's characters. You can click here to learn all about that and click here for all my other House of the Dragon preview videos and more details on the episodes. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next